New performance label by Peugeot. Wow, I'm quite impressed with myself there. I'm a sporty Peugeot. Raw. It's very squishy. That little four cylinder has to work and is always running with all the stuff. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this POV review by Autotop NL. My name is Max, and today I'm going to take you around the all new Peugeot 508 Peugeot Sport Engineered. Uh, PSE is what we're going to use instead of Peugeot Sport Engineered, of course, PSE. Now, this is a new performance label by Peugeot and it kind of replaces the GTI label. I think that's what's going to happen in the future. So today I'm going to show you around it, show you all the cool stuff on it, and then we'll take it for a drive towards the Autobahn for an Autobahn Blast. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed yet and hit the notification bell if you haven't done that yet. Uh, to stay updated when we upload new videos and check us out on Instagram if you like at autotopnl. Alrighty, let's take a look at the 508 PSE and especially the PSE parts of course. We have made a review of the 508 in the past and we're going to focus today on the PSE stuff and there is a lot of it. Now let's start with the color because I think this is the PSE color. You can get this car in this Gris Selenium which is this Nardo gray with a little bit of a metallic flake in there. Uh, you can get it in white or black or this color. So I would say this is the way to go. Looks absolutely stunning because there are a few things that Peugeot uh, and especially Peugeot Sport have done really really well. The way this thing looks is freaking awesome. I mean I have talked about this in the past with other cars that look really sporty and aggressive in their normal form that car manufacturers sometimes have trouble making the performance version look you know cool enough sporty enough aggressive enough like the Ford Focus ST just it doesn't look like an ST it looks like a Ford Focus with an ST light package because that car already looks really sporty this though the standard 508 already looks super cool with those fangs on the side those LEDs that run downward and well that's just a super special sight to behold in the rear view mirror but this PSE version has a couple of tricks up its sleeve now let's start with the grill because you can see that the grill is different and it has these well almost like teeth or like an industrial wood chipper something like that you know it looks really aggressive with all these lines in it uh, the big Peugeot lion in there and of course the 508 badge on the front with the new PSE logo. Now this kryptonite claw thing is the color is kryptonite that that super bright greenish yellowish color and the claw is of course the claw from the lion so rawr. I'm a sporty Peugeot rawr. but I really do like the fact that uh, this color and these details they come back all around the car. And I think they have done that in a very clever way. Now, let's start with the front bumper. As you can see, it is much more aggressive than the front bumper on a standard 508. Um, because it has these massive air intakes here, which, yeah, they're, they're real, I think. Well, this might not be, this is real. And because they are so pronounced, they, they look like they really grab a lot of air and that color in there, that kryptonite, it just makes it look super special and very recognizable. And I really like that. Now, the second thing they've done to make sure that you know this is a PSE is that they've added a little body kit. Now you can see the winglets on the side here. Uh, it's a little extension on the front bumper with a winglet and the kryptonite claw again with a couple more lines and well aerodynamically speaking I don't think that this does a lot but I think the main thing it does is that it widens the car you know when you sit in front of it those winglets actually widen the stance of the car and we'll get to the wheels later but uh, let me just focus on the winglets you can see the little side skirt again with the winglet and at the rear same story you've got quite a big winglet here it's quite a big gap between the rear bumper and the winglet but again when you sit behind it 
the car just becomes so much wider and a little bit more square as well because you can see that the bumper normally it's quite round in that downward slope but because those two angular winglets are there the car becomes so much wider and has a much more aggressive stance so really good job on that i really really like that i think it's a very good addition to the 508 and so are these wheels because these are the standard pse wheels 20 inch on this car with michelin pilot sport 4s tires also really good and then we've got these 380 millimeter peugeot sport alcom brakes also an upgrade over the standard 508 so you do get some serious hardware the only thing i mean this caliper has been painted in that kryptonite as well uh, to match the other stuff which is great but why didn't they do that with the rear one that's kind of strange right missed opportunity if you ask me now again we've got the claw on the side the pse logo uh all black mirror caps window surrounds uh roof rails we've got a panoramic roof one of the few options you can actually select on this car and at the rear i mean i said i love the front but i really love the rear as well i think the 508 sw that's what they call it at peugeot station wagon brake it used to be brake now it's sw it is a gorgeous station wagon absolutely beautiful and again with those winglets with this diffuser here those black tailpipes which are also real oh good job Peugeot um yeah it just it looks super super cool if you ask me I think that is a really handsome performance station wagon without it being too over the top because the standard 508 is already so aggressive it can handle those winglets without it getting too much you know now where's the thingy there it is so here is the engine now the pse Peugeot Sport Engineered gets a hybrid drivetrain. That means that we have a 1.6 liter turbocharged four cylinder engine here with 200 horsepower and 300 newton meters of torque. You also get an eight speed automatic gearbox and between the engine and the gearbox, there is an electric motor, 81 kilowatts, about 110 horsepower. That is linked to the gearbox and is always running with all the stuff. Then additionally, you also get an electric motor on the rear axle uh, with 113 horsepower, 83 kilowatts, something like that. Which brings the total to 360 horsepower and 520 newton meters of torque, which is quite nice, I would say. That is a respectable number, suitable for a car in this segment. I mean, uh, Peugeot says it would like this car to compete with an Audi S4 or a BMW M340i. I mean, dynamically, I, I guess we can compare them to that. Um, the only problem I see here is that when the batteries are not charged, you're left with this 1.6 liter with 200 horsepower, right? So, I mean, you do need to, to charge it as much as you can. Um, Peugeot claims 42 kilometers full electric range we know that you know in the real world that's not going to happen uh, when i left today with the car it said 26 kilometers on a full uh, charge so yeah that's that's the difficult part about this uh we have this car for a few days i mean i can't really test all that stuff too long you know i can't really say well you can live with it or you can't live with it the only thing that that i can say is that it kind of worries me because I'm worried what this 1850 kilo uh, car is going to feel like when you just have the 200 horsepower uh, engine I don't think it's going to be you know worthy of the PSE badge and of the price so that's something to think about uh, PSE I mean I do love the fact that they are back and we know that Peugeot Sport can make some pretty cool stuff I mean you could say that 
Peugeot Sport engineered. It could, all, it could also have been uh, Peugeot Sport electrified because we're going to see more Peugeot Sport engineered cars in the future. Um, and they are all going to be electrified. So that's kind of the future for Peugeot uh, and for PSE. So they do want to keep building sporty cars and performance cars, but they are going to do it with uh, electric or hybrid drivetrains. So that's good to know. On the inside, well, it does look really nice in here. Uh, Peugeot Sport engineered gets these super cool uh, seats with that kryptonite colored stitching, uh, some Alcantara and well, this is basically the GT seat from the 508, but with a different upholstery, but it does look very nice. In here, uh, we've got the infotainment with a lot of shortcut buttons and some stuff for climate and heated seating down there. Kind of like this system now. Um, you have to take, you know, a, a bit of time to get used to it and to find out where everything is. But when you get used to it, it, it actually works pretty well. And I like the fact that you have a touchscreen interface with the most important shortcuts right there. Uh, strangely enough, your traction control is also in there, which uh, automatically activates at a certain speed. So you can't turn that off completely. Um, the steering wheel, well, we have said a lot about this in the past and I have been struggling with this since they started doing this. The i-cockpit with the miniature steering wheel. Now, at first when they introduced it, uh, Peugeot told me that the thing I had to do is set my seat in the correct position. So height and whatever. Uh, okay, that's like this. And then adjust the steering wheel until I can see the dials right so that would be realistically that would be like that okay but that is just super strange that is way too low and my leg hits the steering wheel when i want to hit the brakes so no freaking way i'm going to do it like that all the way up and it is better now uh, the seating position is pretty good i just can't see the dials now i think this is a problem for people over uh, uh, 180 so over six feet uh, because I think if you're below that you don't really it, it doesn't really matter but for me it doesn't work uh, short version it doesn't work long version I just told you so what do I like in here uh, the materials all the leather is nice and soft it's very squishy which is always a really good thing if you ask me this stuff is also nice and squishy we've got those beautiful stitchings all around the car and this car has the upgraded focal audio as well which sounds pretty nice panoramic roof as i said um yeah it is a really actually it is a really nice car to to sit in i kind of like it now i don't know why i don't think i liked it that much last time Start it up. Yeah. So when you start the car up, it will automatically default into electric mode, um, which is the mode we are going to start in. All right. So uh, eight speed gearbox, as I said, automatic. Put that in drive and we are off in electric mode, which is nice and smooth. As I said, Peugeot claims 42 kilometers all electric. Don't think you're going to get there uh, in real life, but you might get close. I don't know. Not really going to test that stuff, to be honest. So what does it feel like? Full throttle. That's not, not fast at all. So uh, this is mainly for getting around town and uh, shorter distances, stuff like that. I would say that works really well. Uh, you can do up to 140 kilometers an hour in all electric mode. So yeah, as long as you don't floor it, it actually feels pretty nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to complain about that. that uh, that's actually pretty nice. Now, we're going to uh, go to hybrid mode. We have a lot of driving modes, so this is comfort but I want hybrid. So hybrid mode, um, this is the most 
I think the most chosen driving mode for people who buy this car, right? You just want both. You just want both. You want the electric stuff, you want the petrol stuff. In this driving mode, you have 330 horsepower and it feels really, really nice. I have to say, it's a very nice car to drive because it's, it's silent and quick. And I really like that. And so you can feel at first when you hit the throttle, it gives you that electric boost. And after that, you can feel the, the petrol engine coming in. So I don't know how to explain this properly, but um, they're not really in sync. But I like the fact that they are not in sync. I like the fact that you actually can feel the difference between the electric uh, drive train, so the electric drive and the petrol drive. I really like that because you can feel that that initial boost and then the petrol uh, engine coming in. I, I, yeah, you would, explaining it like this, you would think that it doesn't work, <laughs> but it actually does. Okay, um, we're going to go for sport mode and we are going to the Autobahn to check out how it feels over there. So I'll get a speedo cam going for you guys. And well, sport mode is the most sporty mode, which means that both the petrol engine and the electric motors work to deliver power. In this case, you get more power in sport mode than in hybrid mode, because now we have the full 360 horsepower, 520 newton meters. So here it is, full throttle. And again, it's not shockingly fast, but it is nice and quick. The only thing, yeah, that was 190 kilometers an hour. You can feel the rear electric motor disengaging. So you can actually feel that 113 horsepower is gone from there. So that means that you only have the front electric motor and the petrol engine. So 110 plus 200, but you can do that like that you can add them up like that but anyway you have less power from 190 kilometers an hour it also has adaptive dampers so the dampers firm up there are three different stages they are now at the firmest setting which is still really comfy but you can feel that it's a bit more hunkered down it has uh, more rigid stabilizers uh, the track is wider at the front 24 millimeters at the rear 12 millimeters the right height is lower so they did change all that to make the PSE feel more sporty and I have to say if you take like an off-ramp at considerable speed it feels really really nice and you can feel the weight at the rear so that means that you can get the rear to step out quite easily if you are enthusiastic enough so where are we I have to 246 on the speedo top speed should be 250 kilometers an hour limited but it does struggle a bit at higher speeds that's 251 on the speedo I have been able to do 250 GPS earlier, so I know it does get there. It just takes a while. But the thing I think is, is quite noticeable is that you have this 1.6 liter four cylinder petrol engine in quite a heavy car. So when you're in sport mode and even at lower speeds, when you floor it, You can hear and feel that that little four-cylinder has to work quite hard to get this car moving. And I think that's a shame because uh, this is a 200 horsepower version of this 1.6 liter engine, but you can also get a 225 horsepower 
uh, version of this engine in a 508. So I don't really get why they didn't go for that one. I mean, yeah, I would say that more horsepower from the petrol engine is better. Maybe it has something to do with uh, with the fuel economy or with the CO2 emissions or whatever. Um, but I think, you know, as long as you have enough electric power, it kind of covers up the weight and covers up the fact that you're, you have a, a 1.6 liter four cylinder engine in, in quite a big car. But when it's gone, like when you're going 190 kilometers an hour, you can feel that rear motor quitting. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It doesn't feel that performance-y, performance-y. I don't know, that's not really a word, but I'm going to coin it. Um, and I think that's a shame because I really do like this car a lot. And I, I do like the fact that Peugeot are, again, coming with these sporty performance cars because I know that Peugeot Sport can really build some really great cars. And wow, that, that's, that's the thing. It, it, I, I almost want to compare it to a diesel performance car because the initial go, like the torque is really strong, but when you floor it, it, it's, it starts feeling less impressive. So a little bit of throttle, you can, oh, you can feel that electric boost immediately. The gearbox changes down and the petrol engine jumps in. And then for a while it's really impressive and then it starts, you know, disappointing a little bit. The chassis though is seriously impressive because I really love the, the combination between the suppleness of the, the chassis and the firmness of the dampers. I think they have set that up perfectly. And it's not a slow car, don't get me wrong. It moves quite nicely. I like the fact that they are back. I like the way they have PSE'd the outside of this car, the exterior. I really love the look of it. Uh, the drivetrain stuff, a lot to love. A couple of things that are a little bit disappointing. And I haven't even tried to compare this car to a BMW M340i because, yeah, I mean, drivetrain wise, it's just not up there. You can't really compare them. I mean, you can compare it to like a BMW 330e, probably, but that is a lot cheaper. But I think this is a lot cooler. So I guess maybe that's where this should be positioned. Like right between an M340i and a 330e is the PSE. You know, it is a performance hybrid, but it's not as performancey. There it is again as an M340i, but it is a lot more sporty and cool than a 330e. I think that's a, wow, I'm quite impressed with myself there. That's a really good conclusion. So that's it, guys. I'm going to end it here. I hope you enjoyed it. You can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle. You can also check out this video or go check out this playlist. See you at the next one. Bye.